All right. So today I actually just want to talk about the current state of where Linux is for desktop use and for gaming. I feel like it's come a long way, even since I've, you know, started using it over the past few years. And I kind of just want to talk about like where the actual state of it is. And if you're interested in, you know, trying out Linux, is it something that you should actually try? Or if it's something that is a little bit more, you know, that is not really ready for the, you know, the everyday use, you know, for some users. So before I jump into all the details, if you have enjoyed my content, uh, please consider, you know, liking and subscribing. And if you want to support me, um, you can do so at ko-fi.com slash the black Don. But yeah, so let, let's jump right in. Uh, so basically I, I feel like if you are in, in certain professions, um, there, there are going to be different things that just don't work on Linux. Uh, essentially a lot of Microsoft products like Microsoft Office will not work and Adobe products uh, will not work. So if those are, you know, some of the things that you need in your day to day life and for your job and things like that, then Linux is not going to be, you know, the option for you, which is fine. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have to use a different operating system, then, then, then so be it. With that being said, you can use the web versions of Adobe and Microsoft Office on your Linux desktop, and you can create, you know, web apps and stuff like that to be used on your desktop. So they, you know, they'll act like just like an app, and they'll they'll show in your actual like app drawer and stuff like that. So in a lot of those things, you know, work just like they do in the actual uh, desktop version. But yeah, I do know that some uh, instances where the desktop version does work better. So th that's completely up to you. If, th if that's something you can um, overcome, then you. Can can go with the web versions and you can definitely you know you know main your uh, Linux uh, desktop as your you know main operating system but yeah so outside of outside of those there are a few like niche um, items that that you probably won't be able to on Linux but I, I can't really go into every you know single um, option that won't be available um, but overall uh, when it comes to your your daily desktop, Linux pretty much has um, a lot of the things that you're looking for. So pretty much all, pretty much a lot of browsers that you're you're gonna want you know will work here. If you want something like the Zen browser, if you want something like the Zen browser, you know that works uh, very well. There's obviously like Chrome. Um, I have Chromium, not the actual Chrome one, but um, Chrome browsers work. You can even get Microsoft Edge if that's what you uh, you know want to use. Um, the only things that aren't like, browser wise aren't available is really just like Arc browser. Uh, but pretty much all all the browsers have a Linux variant. It's like a flat pack or just a regular uh, package repo um, option. So browsers is not really you know a huge issue when it comes to that. Now I guess. And so the, there are going to be like certain programs that just, you know, don't work for your use case, um, depending if it's work. But um, a lot of just everyday use I mean, just, just works in Linux. It's, it's not like a big issue anymore, especially if you're using a desktop environment that, you know, is more familiar. I'm on uh, Neary right now, so it's a scrolling window manager. So every time I spawn something, um, it's going to continue to you know scroll to the, the right there horizontally. But you don't have to get something, you know, as complicated as you know, like what I'm using. There are plenty of other desktops out there. Uh, for instance, like the uh, KDE. Like the KDE desktop, it has a more of a, you know, traditional Windows-based uh, look to it. So this is very, you know, simplistic and easy to use when it comes to like setting up and it's very customizable, way more customizable than like Windows would ever be. But it's, it's all, you know, click and, uh, you know, select and everything like that. So you really don't have to use your terminal and stuff to configure something like Plasma. And then there's also GNOME. So GNOME uh, desktop is a good option too. This one is more so kind of uh, Mac OS related. Um, you're going to have your top bar and like the dock at the bottom uh, if you want to have that. Uh, but it, it is a little bit different, but it, it's also a pretty easy option for you to be able to get into the desktop environment options there and, you know, works pretty well. And then as far as like actual, you know, distros and, and stuff goes, if you want to go with, you know, a GNOME distro or KDE, either one, you know, Fedora is a great, you know, starting point, or you can just go with something like uh, Linux Mint, which a lot of people, you know, do end up going with when they do start, you know, using, they do start using your actual, you know, Linux desktop. But I mean, the, it, Linux Mint is Ubuntu, 
based, which is Debian. So it is going to be um, a little bit outdated as far as packages and stuff goes. So, but if you are gaming and you do want to have a uh, Debian based option, I do suggest uh, PicoS is a really good option for you. They do a good job at optimizing and, and making everything uh, and get everything working for you, um, especially for gaming and stuff like that. So they do have like a GNOME edition and a KDE edition. A lot of these distros are going to have multiple editions for you to install because like them, they even have like Hyperland and Neary as well to be able to install. So depending on what distro you do pick, you can, you know, install different types of uh, desktop environments. But I guess that does segue into the gaming aspect of things. So in gaming, um, I definitely feel like this is going to be a great year. I think the Steam Deck did a great job bringing more awareness uh, to the actual gaming on Linux. Uh, so, you know, there has been some different games and stuff that it started to support it, you know, Linux out of the box. I do feel like having the new Steam machine is going to do wonders. Having an actual device that people can just buy and you know take into their home and start gaming on is going to be a great addition to being able to make sure that Linux is an option when it comes to gaming. That's going to make it so you know developers and stuff are going to definitely you know, have to start considering Linux as an option because if a lot more people are having the you know the Steam machine in their homes and using it on a daily basis, it's going to be like saying, okay, I want to build you know, this this game, and I want it to work on PlayStation, Xbox, and uh, PC. Um, now, when you say PC, someone's going to buy a Steam machine, and that's going to be considered a PC. So you're going to have to make it work there. In the beginning, I, I, I might see it where a lot of games are just going to work on SteamOS itself when it comes to, like, anti-cheat and stuff like that. But that does bridge the gap and make it easier for, you know, us Linux people to start making that available on the actual desktop environments and in different uh, configurations and stuff like that. So I see nothing but good things coming from, you know, a Steam machine. I'll definitely be getting one. I'm mean, super excited for the Steam controller. I do love to use gyro and stuff like that on, on games. So having the Steam controller is going to be great because it's going to have, you know, great gyro. It has like the touch sensitive um, options and stuff on there. So um, I'm definitely, you know, extremely excited for uh, for the Steam controller and the Steam machine itself. Great options. Um, obviously, the Steam Deck is, is already a thing and already doing a lot for a lot of people. A lot of people have gotten a Steam Deck and didn't even really know it was uh, running Linux. And then that's what got them into Linux. So they realized, oh, this is actually a really great experience. Maybe I want to try it, you know, from actual desktop. So you will be able to use, like, even the, the Steam machine as a full desktop. It has the KDE environment that I was talking about previously, you know, pre-installed on it. So you can remove the, not remove, but you can get out of the actual mode and like you see here um this person actually is actually using you know as a full you know desktop environment like they, they can actually use it to a lot of things that um you would do on a you know regular day-to-day -day basis so i think that's going to be a really good option for you know a lot of people um but until that comes out you can still make your actual you know desktop into a kind of a steam machine if you will um you can use stuff like bazite bazite does a really really good job at, especially with hardware compatibility uh with a lot of different things so if i go to like download bazite you can actually select you know what device you want to install this on so if you want it on a, a desktop you know bc um home theater uh pc framework desktop as far as like pcs goes handhelds it pretty much has covered you know across the board um, it even has like Asus laptops and um, framework laptops and you know all the all the different laptops as well and the Asus ROG uh, Flow, which I actually have, and that work, works really well with uh, Bazite on there. And so yeah, so Bazite is a great option until SteamOS is you know uh, uh, available across the board. I don't even know if SteamOS is ever going to be available when it comes to like Nvidia drivers, but maybe AMD. You can you know install it, but it's just not they're not releasing it as you know stable when it comes to comes to downloading it on other machines. So Bazite is, is a great option for you. You can even actually do it through Cache OS as well. Cache OS is a great uh, distribution. Um, their default you know, option is uh, KDE as well, but you can pretty much choose any uh, window manager or desktop environment on Cache OS. So if I actually go to download, and you can see here, um, you can select your preferred you know edition, and they have, they have pretty much everything. <laughs> available there so gotcha this is a great start um it is an arts based distro so it's going to have you know the newer packages and um, more up-to-date uh, drivers and things but they do also have a handheld mode uh, which i've installed this on a desktop before and it actually works pretty well um, I, I even have an nvidia desktop that i've installed this on and it works 
you know, you know, pretty well. It does have some quirks here and there as far as like some flickering and stuff when it comes to NVIDIA in the big picture mode, but there are ways around that to, to get it to work. But yeah, so overall, I, I really feel like Linux is has a chance. <laughs> we, we have a chance to become more of a, an everyday use type of desktop. I've seen so many videos of people coming out with, you know, my mom has tried it, my brother has tried it. You know, I even did one where my brother tried, you know, Linux for the first time, and, and he was actually surprised how... How, how much easier it is than what he thought it was. You know, just looking at it and, you know, looking at the kind of stuff that I do on a daily basis. It, it does seem a little bit scary when you watch everybody, you know, hopping in their terminal and doing a bunch of different things and making all these different changes and stuff. Uh, but there is a simplistic side of uh, Linux that isn't shown as much, which should be. Honestly, it, it should be shown more, but more and more people are using it. More and more people are switching over to it. So if it's something you want to, you know, give a try, I definitely would go ahead and try it out and see what you know see if you like it you can install it on a usb and a lot of these um, options which pretty much every distro has where if you install it onto a flash drive has a live iso option so you boot into that live environment and then you can actually just try it without actually installing it to your computer you can just see what the desktop was like um, you're not going to go as far as you know downloading a bunch of applications and doing all that but it is a live environment so it's not going to be you know yours but you can you know, just try out things and kind of just see how the desktops and stuff feel or and see like how, what packages are available and stuff like that. So definitely, definitely an option to try out. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comments below if, if Linux is something that you're daily driving or if something that you have been thinking about using and you might want to try to use. Um, let me know what your, your thoughts are in the comments below. And like, like I said before, if you enjoy my content, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to support me, please do so at ko-fi.com slash the black dawn. You know, it really helps out the channel. So that way I can continue to bring, you know, content like this to you on a more regular basis. But other than that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.